Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we'll be retelling the story of William H. Carney. I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. I hope you enjoy. Born February 29, 1840, in Norfolk, Virginia, William Harvey Carney was unfortunately brought up as a slave. As the years passed, Carney's family would gradually be freed, either through purchase or death of a current master. William Carney was one of the last of his immediate family to escape the clutches of slavery, but how he did so is of much debate. While the two previous methods of gaining his freedom are plausible, the idea given most merit by historians is the Underground Railroad. Carney, now in his late teens, early twenties, was thought to have escaped from Norfolk by way of the Underground Railroad, where he would rendezvous with his father in Massachusetts. Now free, the Carney family would settle in New Bedford, Massachusetts. William Carney would chase his career aspirations of becoming a minister. During this pursuit, on January 1, 1863, President Lincoln would pass the Emancipation Proclamation, which among other things, granted African Americans the ability to enlist in the Union Army. Carney would change his plans, quickly joining the ranks of the famed 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, commanded by Robert Gould Shaw, who himself was only 26 years of age. The 54th Massachusetts was the first Northern Black Volunteer Regiment enlisted to fight in the Civil War. Carney would soon ascend to the rank of Sergeant, being promoted March 30, 1863. Touted for his leadership characteristics and razor-sharp wit, July 18, 1863, the 54th Massachusetts Regiment would take part in the Second Battle of Fort Wagner, also referred to as the Second Assault on Morris Island. The 54th Massachusetts would volunteer to lead the assault, which promised high casualties if not certain death. Fort Wagner by land was only accessible through a narrow passage, which formed a bottleneck, giving room for no more than one regiment to pass through at a time. Despite this, the 54th Massachusetts would march head-on into the brunt of a Confederate stronghold. Surging towards the enemy parapet, the 54th would encounter its heaviest resistance, with near-constant volleys at close range, battering their lines. Hugging the slope of that parapet was William H. Kearney desperately trying to load his rifle, with musket fire impacting the soil only inches away. In that moment of turmoil, Carney witnessed the regimental flag bearer crumple to the ground, mortally wounded. Without hesitation, William Carney rose from his position, lunged forward, and prevented the flag from touching the ground. Now exposed, Carney was struck once in the arm, leg, and chest by incoming fire. It would buckle him to one knee, and although severely wounded, Carney would not fall. William Carney staggered forward and planted the flag firmly into the top of the parapet, well within view of Confederate troops. The 54th Massachusetts would remain pinned, enduring heavy losses for a large portion of the battle, but Carney persisted, keeping the colors aloft for all to see. Reinforcements later arrived, and what was left of the decimated 54th Regiment withdrew from combat. Carney dragged himself back to Union lines, all while shouldering the flag. Once there, Carney collapsed and was quoted as saying, Boys, the old flag never touched the ground. William Carney would survive his wounds and be honorably discharged in 1864. Following his time as a soldier, Carney would return to New Bedford, Massachusetts and take a job delivering mail, which he did for 32 faithful years. On May 23, 1900, William Carney would finally be recognized for his actions on that fateful day nearly 37 years prior, receiving the nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor awarded to those who went above and beyond the call of duty at great risk to their own life. William Carney deserved nothing less. He is also recognized as the first African American to be awarded the Medal of Honor. Although many African Americans received the decoration before William Carney, his actions predated those of other recipients. December 9, 1908, William Harvey Carney would succumb to complications from an elevator accident at the age of 68. He was laid to rest at the Oak Grove Cemetery in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Engraved on his tombstone is an image of the Medal of Honor. In spite of his death, Carney is immortalized with the 54th Massachusetts Regiment and Colonel Robert Goldshaw in a memorial located across from the Massachusetts State House. We hope you've enjoyed today's short video, and we will be putting out similar content in the future. Again, we are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.